Okay, there is an outcome of SN2 reactions. And SN2 reactions can have an impact on the stereochemistry of your molecule. So let's look at an alkyl halide. And let's do an SN2 reaction on this. Let's pick one of our favorite nucleophiles. Let's use something like cyanide. So sodium cyanide. And let's pick a good solvent for this reaction. Let's use DMSO. And so this is going to do an SN2 reaction. We have an alkyl halide. Yes, it is secondary, but um, a, a really good nucleophile like cy cyanide can do an SN2 reaction on a secondary halide. When this nucleophile attacks, it comes in from the back face of this carbon halogen bond. Now, as a result of it coming in from the back face, it gives inversion of the stereocenter. This is a carbon that has four, it's sp3 hybridized with four different R groups. So when we get inversion of stereochemistry, this hydrogen, which was back, gets pushed forward and what replaces that hydrogen, which was in the back, is our cyano group. And of course, our bromide leaving group is lost and pairs up with our sodium. So this is inversion of stereochemistry. And this is a feature of SN2 reactions. So there are other substitutions that can occur. Namely, we're, we're going to learn about SN1. At SN1, we're going to do substitutions of a leaving group with our nucleophile. But if we see inversion of stereochemistry, that's evidence that we saw an SN2 reaction. We'll see that SN1 reactions don't occur with clean inversion of stereochemistry. Now, one other note. When you do an SN2 reaction, you only get inversion at the stereocenter of interest, okay? You only get inversion where the reaction is occurring. So here we have a cyclohexane, and we have the bromide methyl group, and these are cis with respect to the ring. They're, they're both on the same side of the ring. They're both on the top. So now if we treat this with one of our good nucleophiles, like sodium azide, The azide will come in, attack this carbon, kick out the bromide, and we will again get inversion of stereochemistry. So the hydrogen, which was back, will now come to the front, and now azide will be on the back face, but nothing occurred at this stereocenter. Therefore, we're not going to change anything. It, so it, it's not that every stereocenter inverts. It's just the stereocenter at which the reaction occurred. So now the azides in the back face and the methyls on the top face, this is now a trans product. So yes, we get inversion of stereochemistry in the SN2, but we only get inversion at the site of reaction. Any other stereocenters are left untouched. This is an important feature of the SN2 reaction that we get inversion of stereochemistry.